Hi, Luke from Trout River here today and we're going to walk through the steps in installing a conveyor chain in a Trout River trailer. Before we start I'd just like to say that the trailer and other machines used in this could be potentially dangerous. I'd just like to ask you to stay safe during this procedure. The tools and supplies needed for this procedure will be hydraulic power, that would be a power pack or a truck that has the wet line installed, a rope at least double the length of the trailer plus 20 feet, a pulling device, something like a truck or a forklift or anything that can pull the rope, the chain pulling jig we use or an old crossbar but it will get bent, two bry bars to help guide the chain into the trailer, You'll need wheel chocks to be sure the trailer doesn't move while you're pulling the chain in. Chain binds to help install the connector links. You're going to need an extra connector link and it'll be used to properly install the connector links. We're going to need an inch and a half, inch and a quarter, and two inch and five sixteenths wrenches. You're going to need a flashlight to see if the chain is aligned once it's installed. You need a hammer and a punch used to seat the rear bearing lock collar. You'll need a special socket for the rear bearing lock collar nut and it's pictured here. And you're going to need a torque wrench capable of 225 foot pounds. Step one of this procedure is getting the conveyor placed behind the trailer and ready to pull in. So the importance of this is that the conveyor must be placed so it can be pulled in upside down. It's pulled in on the bottom half of the conveyor track. So the bars should be facing this way and it will be pulled into the trailer around the front shaft and then back up the top. Step two is to attach your chain pulling jig. We use a piece of two inch channel that's drilled the same as a crossbar and it will fit the chain. It's a lot more sturdy so it's less likely to bend but an old crossbar will also work quite well. Step three is to root the rope so it has to go under the I-beam structure around the front shaft and then back over top of the I-beam structure. Once the rope is rooted, you want to attach the bottom side to the conveyor and the top side will be attached to your pulling device, whether the truck or forklift, etc. Step 4. Prep the front of the trailer. Providing your front shaft and sprockets are already installed, the only thing you have to do is loosen off the adjusters. Step 5. Lift the chain into the trailer. The chain must be manually lifted into the trailer here. One person on each side, lift it up in. One thing that you should take note of, and I'll have a picture up, is that you have to lift the chain past the bogey clamp bolts or else the chain will get caught up on these when you're trying to pull it in. And this is done much easier if you take some tension on the rope, but you just want to be sure you don't take too much because you could cause some injury. Step six, pull the chain into the trailer. This is where the two pry bars come in handy. Place them on the rear cross member of the trailer and use them to guide the chain up over the bottom plate of the frame. If you don't use these pry bars, the chain will catch on the frame. You want to pull slowly. Make sure nothing catches during the entire pull. And as you come to the front of the trailer, you want to make sure that the chain engages on the sprockets properly. You want to pull it all the way to the edge of the junior I-beams if the back shaft is not installed. If it is already installed, you can pull it right onto the back shaft. Step seven is install the back shaft. Step eight is install the rear bearing. You can skip these steps and go straight to step nine if your back shaft is already in. Installing the back shaft is done by lifting the back shaft. It's easiest done with two people into the track where it has to go. There's a hole on the curb side that the shaft slides into and then slide it onto the gearbox spline. You want to keep the shaft true to the spline as you're sliding it on or else it'll burr up the inside of the spline and make it even more difficult to install. Once you get the back shaft slid onto the spline, you want to line up each sprocket to the chain rail. And once this is done, you should take a measurement on the gearbox side just to be sure this doesn't move in the next step. Step eight is to install the rear bearing. The first thing you want to do is slide on your bearing collar on over the end of the shaft. The next thing you can do is slide the bearing over the bearing collar. 
Now you can install and snug both bearing bolts, one on the top, one on the bottom. And you want to snug these because at this point you can pry the shaft up and down and it'll stay there. You want to get the shaft level with the gearbox. So with these bolts snugged, you can pry it up, pry it down, it'll stay there. Once you get it true, you want to measure off certain points of the trailer and then you can tighten down the bolts. The next step you want to do is to tap the bearing collar up tight against the bearing itself. This is where the punch and hammer come in. Go on the back side, punch that over, tight to the bearing. This is where you want to measure off your gearbox to the sprocket of the shaft to make sure it didn't move. Once the bearing collar is slid up against the bearing, you can install the bearing collar nut and tighten this down to 225 foot-pounds. Again, after this is tightened, you want to measure from the gearbox to the sprocket, be sure nothing moved. The last thing you should do is to bend down the tab of the lock ring into the bearing collar nut so it cannot loosen off. In step 9, this is where we bring the two ends of the chain together and we install the connector links. Before the connector links can be installed the right way, they have to be installed backwards. And with the pictures, you can understand why this has to be done this way. What we do is we pull the chain onto the back shaft, rotate it around just to the bottom. Then the gearbox and back shaft will hold this end of the chain. We then take the come-alongs, hook it on to the crossbar at the back of the tra trailer. We take the other end of the come-alongs, hook that onto the crossbar towards on the front end of the chain, and use this to pull the two ends of the chain together. At this point, you can slide the connector links in from the inside, which is backwards, and this step is done. Now that the two ends of your chain are connected, we can move on to step 10, where we use hydraulic power to move the connector link to the inspection door of the trailer. Once it's there, use your pry bars to pry it up into a more workable area. Then you can use your extra connector link to hammer out the old connector link. You can do this to both sides. Once the links are in the proper way, you can then install the cap and the cotter pins. Step 11 would be to install the last crossbar, so just where you installed the connector links, you can bolt in the last crossbar here. Step 12 is to tension the chain, so I'm not going to go into great detail, we have a video on it already on YouTube. You just want to turn your adjuster bolts till the chain reaches the proper tension. Measure off the front frame of the trailer to be sure you get both sides the same, and Use the adjuster lock bolts to lock down the tensioner. Do this to both sides of the trailer and step 12 is complete. The final step to this procedure would be to just take your flashlight, go under the trailer and you can watch the chain run on the chain rails. Be sure that it's centered. Be sure there's no rubbing or anything happening that shouldn't happen. Once this step is done, your conveyor install is complete. I'd like to thank each of you for joining me for this video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, don't be scared to contact me. My contact information is at the end of this video. Uh.